Okay, we'll make this a little interactive. So I'm going to start off by asking you some questions. Uh, so uh, how many people know about schema theory? Yeah. How many people don't know about schema theory? How many people don't have any hats? <laughs> Quite a number of you, that's all right. Um, this is around, a lot of photographs from around the home, uh, my island where I live on Bowen Island, just outside of Vancouver. Schema theory, and this is the view from my uh, kitchen window, but child psychologist Jean Piaget introduced the idea that schema theory goes way back. It goes back in other forms and other titles and other names, but it was brought into this sort of art, art interest in linguistics and language with the work of uh, Frederick Bartlett and R.C. Anderson. They were guys who sort of put it together. When we're talking about schema, a schemata is some kind of mental organization of information about the relationships. And these are rose hips, little rose hips left over, and the rose bushes all around it, and you can see the connections between them. Some are direct, and some are not so direct, and some are overlapping in many ways. When I think about things, I try to think of, you know, what are all the relationships that we have, and your mind changes throughout the time. So we're going to talk about snow. And uh, as a sample schematic, so I'm going to ask you the question: When you see snow, and what do you think? What do you think about when you see snow? Give me some answers. Snow. Snow. Okay, enough. Who cares? Uh, when I think about snow, uh, and take about three minutes to do it, I wrote out this quick thing, and I came up with all of these sort of different ideas. There's 31 up there, actually, in three minutes that I sort of scribbled out the snow, sort of just in the center there. Uh, so, you know, different ideas come up, and, and they changed at different times, but I had five general categories. Uh, tools, uh, tools, the Inuit, or the Eskimo people who live in the north of Canada, weather, plague, and then cold. Cold is a bit of a mistake, should have gone under weather, but that's part of what we do in our schema, is we're always adjusting things. I'd like to talk about just three of these ones. Uh, uh, the uh, frostbite and igloo and skis. Um, every time when we say these things, uh, when we have associations, we often have multiple associations, and we have to share these with kids and get them sort of interested and excited about them in some ways. So what I'd like to do is give you three examples of how we might talk about these things and how, how we sort of have to use schema to adjust to it. In the first sentence, I say it was falling so hard and fast and at this point, you're thinking, is he talking about rain? Is it a car going over a cliff? Is it a piano jumping out a window to fall on somebody below? But then we say, I thought we might make an igloo by the afternoon. The igloo is the one that tells us that it's snow, right? Uh, she told me that if I had skis, I could go with her, right? And uh, if, this is very, very sort of situational in this case, because if you were saying this in the middle of winter, it makes sense to go skiing, right? But if it's in the middle of the summer, you might be thinking about the water skis. So it's the context in this case which changes it. After the avalanche, he was buried up to the neck and frostbite started to set in. This one's a little bit different again because it's really the, the understanding of what an avalanche is and frostbite. First of all, if you're in an avalanche and there's rocks involved, nothing's happening. You're really not worried about the frostbite. But that suggests other things. When we build schema, as soon as we learn a new word or an idea, we try to make it fit with other words and ideas that we've already learned. And we make that fit on the sound system or other words that we know or other associations. And already, as I'm talking about all these things, and you're seeing those pictures, you're thinking about a lot of things to do with snow. Sometimes this means destroying things that we thought we knew. When you're learning new schema and new words, uh, you learn something and somebody tells you something, you say, no, that's not how you do that, right? I pronounce uh, robot, robot, and my wife says, not robot, it's robot, you know, you're, you're going to pollute the children's minds. Uh, we usually try to force what we know into our existing schema. And uh, uh, to do this, I'm going to give you a little example. We're going to consider a case of the businessman and the vagrant, which was a very famous uh, uh, psychological experiment that was conducted. In this particular experiment, what they did is they created a short little video. And you've got a businessman walking down the street, and he pulls out a knife, and he's walking past a vagrant, and he stabs the vagrant. And then that's it. That's it. They stop the film, and they ask everybody, they say, what happened? What happened? And they said, oh, it's terrible. They said that vagrant was walking down the street and stabbed the businessman. And they get it totally mixed up. So this is a problem that happens all the time. So what about language teaching and learning? How does all of this relate to that? Learners come to the classroom with extensive schema already, but we often don't bother to find out about it. 
we need to explore their schema. My kids have been to 25 countries. Uh, they were doing a unit on uh, unit on Egypt, and uh, the teacher was telling them all about it. They came and told me about this. I said, did you tell them? Did you find the pyramids and take a cruise on the Nile? We need to raise, re, raise learners' awareness of schema, have them create schema on their own in groups, and let them identify what they know, what they don't know, and what they want to know, right? We need to teach general ideas and concepts as well in schema-related ways so that they can put together a wide range of ideas and fit them together. And basically, we're giving them the Lego pieces or the building blocks of knowledge and education and putting them all together. But they have to have those blocks, so we need to supply them to them. We help learners make connections between ideas through more than words as well. When they're drawing out a schema, they don't just need to write words. They can do it with illustrations. They can act things out in role plays, puppets, songs, visual aids, anything to somehow connect ideas together. It's just an essential thing we should be doing in the language classroom. Now, I want you to think about this because this is one way. Schema is one way to organize information. We could do many others. We could do things in chronological orders, and we, we have many ways of organizing. My wife is a painter. She thinks in color. She remembers colors about everything, right? No, that's not going to go with your soup, dear, right? Um, we need to remember. Remember that learners' schema are always growing and changing as new information is acquired. But new information is also sometimes lost. So we have to go back, and that's part of the revision process, in teaching them again. That's what we do. Thank you so much.